Today shows you how to do some post processing on the differential drive car, which we developed and controlled in the previous two tutorials. I will link the file you can download for the differential drive in the, in the control mode so that you can start using that file as you listen to this video. In this video, we'll see how to get the position velocity of the car. In this case, we did have the chassis using these two commands. Then I'll show you how to graph the velocity using these two commands. Um, Finally, I'll show you how to trace the path of the chassis on the screen so that it's good for visualization using these, these two commands. Now, uh, these commands are also found in the regular API. So if you Google search CoPLS same regular API, you'll see a link to the functions, which I'm going to talk about in this particular video. So I'm going to start off with this car, which I developed in the previous tutorial, which is also going to be linked in the description. Uh, if you run this, simulation, then you see the car goes straight and then starts turning. So now what I'm trying to do is trying to get the position of the car. In this case, I'm going to get the position of the chassis, which is a good representative of the car position. So let's look at the API. Okay. I just need to search for uh, object position. So I'm interested in getting the position. So get object position. So we're interested in writing the code for Lua. So this is what the code looks like. So I need to, in order to get the position, I just say sim dot get object position. I give the object handle. In this case, I need to generate the handle for the chassis, which I've done in the previous lecture. And I'll show how to do that. I also need to define relative to object handle flag. And you can see here in the description what that means. It indicates to, to which reference frame we want the positions. In this case, I'm interested in getting the position with respect to the world. And I think they give you that you need to say sim.handle world if you want it with respect to the world. I'm going to do that. So let's copy this. Go back to our code. Yeah, and now the question is where would you put it now? Since this is a part of um, a data which you're going to get from the simulation, I would put it in sensing. So let's modify this now. So this is case is going to be the position of the chassis. So we can call it chassis position. I need to define the handle now. It turns out that I've not defined a handle for the chassis. I've defined handles for the joint left and right. So I'll define a handle for the chassis next. And that should always be in the init. Call that chassis. And then here I'm going to say C-H-A-S-S-I-S -S -S with uh, C capital because that's the name here in the scene hierarchy. Okay, so now once it's ready, you can go here, say this. Okay, and then as I said, this should correspond to um, the world. So I need to say same dot handle underscore Okay, so this gives me the position. Now, what exactly is written by position is, uh, if you remember, it was, um, it basically returns a float three position, which means that it's going to return three numbers, which corresponds in this case to X, Y, Z position. So in order to get the X, Y, Z position, what we need to do is we can print um, chassis position, one position two and then let's say that we want this to be the x position so what i need to do is i need to say here X equals that, and this is just a syntax which uh, 
coalescing used to display the make print. So x equals and show the position similarly here. y equals okay so everything looks like then it will print the x and y position in this over here so this and one and so it's just you can look at it's printing x y x y position and so, okay, so that's how you get the position now let's see how to get the velocity going back if you search for object velocity then uh, this is the syntax. So here what I want is it actually returns two variables, the linear velocity and angular velocity. And I need to just say get object press int object handle. Now in this case, it actually returns the velocity with respect to the world. Okay, so I'm going to get the velocity. So I just to save us some time, I just wrote this off offline. Go here and okay, and then you can check this by saying print um, say dx equals dot chassis linear velocity uh, one. Okay, let's comment out these two. You want them? Okay, so we run this and then you can see it's printing the vx velocity. Okay, so we've done part one, getting the velocities. Okay, let's do the second part, which is uh, figuring out how to graph this. So what we'll do here is first we'll create, we'll add a graph. So add graph, okay. And you can see it puts this graph. Now um, we'll have to tell it to, what to put in the graph by writing some code. So we go back to this. And then if you look for a graph, these are the functions related to graph. Okay, so what we do here first is we um, we add a graph stream. So we'll be looking at this. <clears throat> so what this function will do is it will it will identify that we want to add a graph stream corresponding to, in this case, let's say the chassis velocity, it will assign a color to it and also assign a label to it. Okay, and this will be done, uh, this is like a definition, so it will be in the init, init uh, function. So let's get this. Okay. Uh, here, we need to give a handle to the graph, we need to give the stream a name, so in this case, vx or velocity x. Option. option is over here. Um, so unit string is something which in this case, uh, we can just ignore that. Uh, let's look at options. Options are uh, stream not visible. Let's just put zero there because that's the default. And then this gives the color. So RGB in this one zero zero would mean red. Let's take this. Here. So create that first. Okay, but before that, let's create um, an object graph. Same dot get object. Slash graph. Okay. That's a long thing. Let's just call this. Um, we got to give this graph a name. So in this case, I'm going to uh, plot the velocity in the x direction. So I'll call it, let's say, chassis the x. Uh, I need to give the handle of the graph. So in this case, it's going to be graph, which I just defined, the name of the string. So that would be, uh, let's call that vx. Let's keep the option as zero. And then we need to give a color. 
I think we are happy with uh, red, and then we don't we can ignore the last one. Okay, now this by itself will not plot the graph. I just need to do some one more thing. Let's go to the API. I need to assign a stream value. And so uh, this will basically take that handle and put it on this plot. So I need to get this. Okay, here the graph handle is going to be uh, the, the name I just created. It's going to be uh, um, graph. The stream ID is going to be the chassis VX. And then the value I need to put, which is going to be the the object velocity in the x direction. So we'll take this. Let's put it here. This graph handle is graph. Stream ID is the name I just created. It's going to be chassis x. The value in this case, I'm interested in plotting the uh, x velocity. A linear velocity, so chassis linear velocity, the x value one. This is pretty much this value. So this thing. Okay, so everything looks right. Then we can run this and see if it plots. It is. Okay, this looks like I missed something. Uh, I think I, I might know what it is. I think it's this function. There was an, another one which I missed. Let's go back to graph stream. So the one I think I missed accidentally was the string. This basically tells it what are the units you want to have this. So I'm going to, that in this case is it's, uh, meters per second. So I need to just add that just after this. Just in a comma. Okay, I believe that's all. Okay, so what you can see here is that this is the graph, the velocity in the x direction, and then it's telling you how it is varying. Now, you can also add another graph. Let's just, we want to perhaps also plot the velocity of the y direction in the same plot. So you can do that very easily. I'll do the, what I'll do is I'll copy this. I'll change this Vx handle to Vy. Change this to uh, Vy. The units are same. I want to change this color to blue. And right here, I will just put the y in this case the y velocity is two. Okay, with that I think it will plot both the things. So my bad, I took a green value instead of blue. So here it shows the x velocity and the y velocity. Okay, the final step uh, I'm going to show you is when this moves, you might perhaps be interested in showing the path of this project uh, of this jazzy on this. Uh, scene instead of showing on a graph, and I'll show you how to do that. So for that, what we'll do is uh, we will be using uh, a function called uh, graph uh, draw object. So let's search where that is. Drawing object. Okay, so. This is the syntax of drawing object. So we have, we need to take the object type. This, uh, so the object type is basically an, an attribute, which is the probably here. So drawing points, lines, line strip, triangles, and so on. So I'm going to use sim dot drawing line strip. Then we have size, how big you want it. We'll choose some value, in this case, five. Uh, the the tolerance is here. Let's just put zero. The parent object handle, the, the parent 
object handle is uh, where we want this to be drawn. In this case, we want from the world frame. So this will be minus one, it's related to the world. Then maximum item count, this is the number of dots, which will be our lines or uh, dots will be available in order to make that particular line. So I just put some random big value and then the color. So again, it will be uh, RGB and you can choose whatever values you want. So here I done, I've done this work ahead of time just to save us some time. I'm just going to copy paste that in my scene. So here line strip is the size 10, which is set five. So let's just make it five, uh, zero. You can ignore that minus one respect to the world. The number of points, let's just say maybe you can just make it thousand. It should be good enough for the simulation. Uh, RGB, you can make it red. Uh, and you can ignore the, the remaining things. Grab the trace, but now, we only created the handle. We've not really put it on that figure. We need to still tell it that this trace will correspond to the position of the object. So for that, we need to look at the API again. And here I'm interested in uh, in this function called object item. Okay, so uh, this basically places that position trace on the scene. So the syntax is this okay uh, i need to give the handle in this case it's that chassis stress which i have and then i need to give the item data so in this case the item data is going to be the chassis position so if you want you can have make it output the result which in this case will be true or false but i'm just going to ignore that so i'm just going to take the first part of this without the return value and then modify it let's go down to sensing And then change this to trace. And then in this case, we want to put the position. So in this case, I've already created the charges position as a, a, a variable. So I just put it here. Okay, and now we can run it. So you can see it's just showing the Red trace. Okay. Now, sometimes you don't want this graph to be uh, over here. You want to change it. Then you can click on the sliders on the, on the right of the graph. And you can say, put it to the let's say bottom left. This is gone there. Now you can replay this. And so now you don't have to move the graphs. Around. Okay, so that ends the video.